everybody, how's it going? My name's Jessica and welcome to my channel, Jessica in Progress. Today I bring you a vlog uh, for the Once Upon a Book Club Spooky and Sweet Box. So first what we're gonna do is open up our boxes. We got the spooky one right here. It was the first one out. So let's go ahead and do that. Open up, there we go. Now for the spooky and sweet boxes, for Once Upon a Book Club, you are told the book in advance. So I already knew that this was going to be Hemlock Island by Kelly Armstrong. Okay, so what we have here is kind of like a haunted island type of book. Kind of haunted house, but island style. Now for Once Upon a Book Club, if you don't know, you basically get like the subscription box and it encourages you to read the book that they send you because all of the gifts coincide with a passage from the book. One other thing that they give you is a, or a couple other things honestly, is a booklet with the author interview discussion questions and something fun on the back. This one's a word search. Okay, then they give you a quote from the book with an author letter. The they always give you a bookmark that coincides with the book. So this is the same quote. And then a reminder uh, to open your packages when they come up. Um, and that's honestly one of my favorite things about this is that they always give you a book club, a bookmark that matches the book. And then of course a book plate with the signature. So let's see what packages we've got because they're packaging also. I love their packaging so much. So our first package is going to be on page 15, and we've got this really small spiderweb bag, okay? If I'm feeling inside, it's a cloth-ish item. Couldn't tell you what it is, though. The next item is page 53 in a plastic bag with all of these. I want to say that it's going to be a pillowcase, maybe? It's... Again, a fabric item. I can feel the zippers on this side. So I want to think that it's going to be pillowcases. The next one we open is going to be on page 92 in this skeletal box. And I could not tell you a si <laughs> I don't know. Couldn't tell you what it is. But there we go. And then the next one here fits in the box pretty well. So we gotta just kinda finagle it out. You've got page 145 in this folder. It feels thick, maybe like a metal plate, like a metal decorative plate is what I'm thinking for this one. So that is our spooky box. So let's go ahead and get into reading Hemlock Island. Okay, so I'm not gonna lie to you, I kind of started reading this book before I even filmed the intro, but I am 36 pages into it, which means we can open up page 15. Let's go to the passage so you know what the sentence is for this. She's comparing sneakers with Madison, who's wearing her October specials, a pair of horror-themed vans. Then they're trading shoes and I'm watching. So maybe... Maybe this is gonna be like shoelaces, like horror themed shoelaces. That'd be pretty cool. Um, anyway, while I open this up, we are following Lainey, okay? She is recently divorced with a dude named Kit, who is the brother of her best friend, Jayla. And her sister also, so Lainey's sister, also recently died. And she has basically taken over guardianship and adopted her niece, Madison, who's 16 years old. Now, when Lainey was married to Kit, he's like a CEO, comes from old money, 
you rich guy. So he bought her a island as a wedding present. Now she can't afford it herself in the divorce because she is, she's a teacher post the happening of 2020. Um, and she's also a writer. So she's published, I think like two, at least one book and she has another book coming out. Anyway, she is renting out her house on this island. It's a very recluse island in the Great Lakes. Uh, so it has like no cell phone reception, no service, like no email, no Wi-Fi, none of that. Um, and the book starts off with her getting a call from someone that she's renting it out to saying that they found a gruesome scene in the closet. And we find out that this is not the first weird thing that has happened to her beach house since she started renting it out. So right now we have just arrived onto the island and we've kind of met our cast of characters for this. Um, we have Lainey, the main character. Uh, we have Madison, her niece, who's 16 years old. We have her old best friend, Jayla. I don't know if they're still friends or if they're kind of like icy, but there's something going on where they're not super close anymore. We have her ex-husband, Kit. Um, and then we also have Saban, Sadie. Hold on. Sadie. So we also have Sadie, who is also her old ex who was also her friend. So her, Jayla and Sadie, Lainey, Jayla and Sadie, were all best friends. Something has happened and now Lainey and Sadie aren't on speaking terms. And there's also maybe Sadie is now dating Kit, maybe. They apparently had at least a one night stand before Lainey and Kit got married. But you know, that was way before then. Sadie also brought her brother Garrett, who is a cop and like, he gives off like not good vibes from the start, like asking if Madison's trans or something because she has a pixie cut <laughs> and just being rude all around. But anyway, let's go ahead and open up page 15. We've got ourselves. Oh, real cute. Some shoelaces. They are tied together really well. That was probably a mistake. Two pairs of shoes, okay. I thought it was a mixed match set. So we have two sets of shoelaces, okay? First one is this skeletal, hello, skeletal design right here, okay? And then they've got metal aglets, which is nice. The other set is this pink, like, can we focus? Thank you. This pink with eyes looking, and again, the metal aglets. There we go. So I think I disappear for another 90 pages. I'll be back on page 92 to open the box. No, no. I'm going to be gone for 50 pages, technically from the whatever. 53 is going to be our next package. I'll be back. Good morning. So we read on the couch last night with uh, my husband and we made it all the way to page 124, which means we have two packages to open. So um, before we even do that, I wanna make a little bit of amendment. I know that in the opening, I said that this was a haunted uh, island. It's a slasher island. Sorry, we have like a slasher going on. And I am super enjoying the story so far. Like I like the tension that we have and I like the, um, dynamics between all of the characters they're really fun and interesting um and i like how we're unpacking their past the author is playing a little bit of keep away with us because obviously everyone all of the characters know what happened between laney and sadie uh that caused them to have like a massive rift in their thing we did find out why jayla and laney had a rift and they've kind of healed it a little bit um you know over a body falling on top of Lainey <laughs> so let's go ahead and go <laughs> um so it, it's just been it's been a fun time I'm I'm really enjoying this um I like didn't want to put it down yesterday but I was tired and it was like two o'clock and I have to go to work in the morning you know <laughs> um so anyway page 53 the quote is 
I stumble back, hand slapping over my mouth. There's blood on the pillow. Blood and a hank of hair. So I think I was right about this one being a pillow. Or I mean pillowcase. So I hope we get like bloody pillowcases. Like I hope that it's Halloween spooky season and not like every day for the core. So here we are. And we've got ourselves Oh, cute. Okay, sorry. So here we go. We've got a trick or treat uh, pillowcase. And then we've got a spooky pillowcase. These are great. I absolutely love these. The spooky one, the best, honestly. <laughs> it's kind of like a thing that my husband and I do. Like, we'll just see something, we'll be like, spooky. And then the other person will be like, scary. And then we'll go into the skeleton song. <laughs> and then we also quote, like, the old vine, bats. It's freaking bats. <laughs> But these are really cute. I have two square pillows on my main couch, so I'm gonna wash these and replace like the flannel bits on them and put these on. These are so cute. I And they're really good quality too. Like it's a nice canvas. Like they match the quality of my IKEA pillowcases. I don't know if they're as thick, so it'll be interesting to see if like the pillows come the feathers come through, but this is a nice quality square pillowcase. Anyway, let's move on to page 92 with this little box. Okay, and this one is... He brushes past me as he strides into the boathouse. I can only stare, certain I'm seeing wrong, wanting to be wrong. Kit grabs a battery-operated lantern and shines it around the gloom. Destroyed. So, I think this is a lantern. We've got a cute little lantern here. It's got Kit's lantern. Requires three AA batteries not included. Features two brightness modes. Product is not waterproof. Do not place in the water or leave outside while raining. And then it's got the Once Upon a Book Club at the bottom there. So this is a cute little lantern. Let me uh, pause this and then I'll go put some batteries on it so we can see how well it lights. Okay, so we're batteried up. I turned off the main light and I'm also going to turn off my ring light so we can see how well this lights up. Okay, so we've got this brightness. And that's pretty, pretty bright, honestly. Like, dang. Look at him. And then the next mode is easier on the eyes. A lot easier. And then it goes off. I'm going to light my whole set with this. There we go. Nice backlighting here. <laughs> um, so anyway, also like if you're in movies and they have the torch up front, this is literally blinding them. So the proper way to hold the torch is behind you so you can actually see in front of you, by the way. <laughs> um, anyway, um, I'm actually really excited for this. Like we go, like we have a flashlight for our walks, but this is a nice little like sitting outside when it's kind of dark or, you know, investigating a boathouse that's been absolutely destroyed, <laughs> a little thing. So yeah, no, I'm, I, I'm loving this box so far. I really am. So Let's keep reading. I'll be back in a few more pages because I'm almost close to the next one, which is on 145. So I'll see you then. So I finished Hemlock Island yesterday. <laughs> um, and I just couldn't film until right now because the dogs were being crazy every time I tried to film. And then, you know, there's other nightly duties that I have. Anyway, finished it. I really, really liked it. Um, I would almost give it a five star. There's just one problem that I have, and if it had only happened like one time, I wouldn't have cared, but it continually happened where the entire cast of characters and the author, obviously, was keeping something away from the reader. So we have this instance where one of the, um, one of the characters is talking to our main character and instead of like going through the conversation that they have, it instead is like, 
Sadie told me this thing that made me mad. Um, and we got into an argument and it didn't like go through what that thing was. And if it was just between the two of them that we were supposed to find out later, then fine. But it was brought up again a couple pages later between Lainey and Jayla. And she was like, Sadie told me a thing. So I told Jayla the thing that Sadie said and Jayla reacted this way. And then it was gone through again with Kate, like a hundred pages later, where he was just like, I can't believe that she did all of that to you, but it doesn't tell the reader what it is. And I think it makes it a little bit weaker because the secret that isn't like told to us we could have known in chapter two and a lot more of like how Lainey was feeling about some things would have been more clear um, and would have been like a harder hit with her decisions that she was making for some of these things. But no, um, we can't find out the secret that we allude to like four times until about the 200 page ish mark. Um, so anyway, we have, uh, so anyway, with that being all said, I did really love this book. Um, it is a like horror haunted slasher island and it was so much fun to read. I think it could have gone a lot darker, but it chose not to. And I like the end a lot, <laughs> um, you know, but it would have been like, you could have gone real dark with this book and then it didn't. So I re but I really enjoyed it. I like trying to figure out what was going on. And I really did love all of the characters and the interactions that they had and all of their motivations as well. It was a great, great book, great spooky book. Anyway, <laughs> we have page 145 to open. So here is the passage for it. Kit spots something. It's a piece of fiberglass with looping script on it. A single word. Wicked. Okay, so I think I was right about the metal sign something artwork piece. Um, now if I can just open it properly without super tearing the packaging. Going on the back of it. And... It's really stuck in there. <laughs> there we go. That's a down, isn't it? That's a cute little sign. Something wicked this way comes. It looks like it has like a clear layer on top. So it has like a, a, a 3D-ish effects to it. The license plate kind of holes are annoying because how like just hanging this on a wall is going to be interesting but i imagine you could probably also like ribbon it into the middle of a reef 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 wreath um but i really like this with the spider webs and the everything so yeah Okay, so for the sweet box for Once Upon a Book Club, we have, oh, that falling right out. And this is gonna be the book, My Roommate is a Vampire by Jenna Levine. So for the sweet box, we get, again, the pamphlet with the author interview, discussion questions. And then this one is gonna have vampire matchup game in the background. Or on the back, on the back. We have our quote card right here. And then the author letter as well. And then our bookmark and book plate signed. Now in order of page opening, we have page, oop, page 121. And with solid boxes like these, I honestly could not tell you what's in here. But again, look at those little bats. They're so cute. And then almost immediately after, we're gonna have page 125 in this striped Beetlejuice type print. 143, it's got a letter. And I hope this is stationary 
but I wouldn't be surprised if it's like a puzzle. And then the last one is 336 with these little ghost packaging that's so cute. Now, I'm going to think that this one's like jewelry, like a necklace or like a ring or something, just because I know that the spooky book, the sweet book, is supposed to be like, you know, sweet rom-com, real nice. And so now that we've seen the sweet box, let's go ahead and start reading My Roommate is a Vampire. Where's the book so I can say the author's name? My Roommate is a Vampire by Jenna Levine. So is it basically 2 a.m. on a Thursday evening? Um, and I finished the book basically in one sitting, except for like one break in between to take Sten to his 10 month vet appointment and have dinner. Yes, we are done with the book. <laughs> it was very cute. It was very sweet. I really liked it a lot. It was very enjoyable. Um, the end was a little silly and honestly knocked it down to a four star, but I loved it. It was, it was really cute. It was really good. So basically in my roommate is a vampire. We follow Cassie, who is a art person who is down on her luck in Chicago. And she answers a Craigslist ad for a very fancy room that's only going to be $200 a month. Um, and of course, our Craigslist ad blister person is Frederick J. Fitzgerald. Uh, a very old vampire uh, that we find out. Well, I mean, the reader knows immediately that he's a vampire, but, you know, Cassie finds out later. Anyway, he essentially needs uh, a modern-day person to teach him modern-day things because he has been trapped in a coma slumber for, like, a hundred years and has no clue what's going on. <laughs> so we kind of, like, follow this cute little love story you know, as the vampire and the art person fall in love as they, as he learns about modern society. I kind of wish there was more of that. I feel like what was going on in the background of both of the characters' lives took up a major chunk of the book, especially the end. Um, and I also really liked the small amounts that we got of Fitzgerald's point of view, which is just like, journal entries and text messages at the start of the book, um, as well as his little notes. I wish we had gotten more of that because like I would have been down for a cute little romance, no, no stakes, um, <laughs> no stakes romance, but there are a little bit of stakes in here. Um, it was really, I liked it. I enjoyed it. I, you know, read it in a day. Obviously I liked it. So, Let's go ahead and move on to the little gifts that we found in here. Now, they were basically all right next to each other, except for the final one. Um, so it went page 121, page 125, page 145. Like, even by the time I was like, I should stop and open up the two gifts, we were already at page 145. And I was like, I'm just going to keep going. I don't care. Anyway, let's start with page 121. This one... This passage says, I fidgeted with my purse strap to disguise how rattled I was. There is page 121's package. I'm gonna need a knife. Okay. And... Oh, how adorable. Hold on. Oh my god, it's a cute little coffin, little bat purse thing. Hold on. Let me open her up. Take the paper out. Oh, this is so cute. Okay, so on the inside, we've got this red skull and bat motif going throughout. I really love it. And then the tag has it as well. It says Cassie's Purse from Once Upon a Book Club. And then it has a black strap to it. Oh my god, I have been wanting just a nice little purse for like just going to the grocery store, just wallet, phone, keys. <laughs> this, this is, I love this. I love this. Can... Yeah, I know, bud. Hi. Yeah, you're hitting the tripod. So, page 121 is this cute little coffin purse. I'm so excited for this. Page 
page 125, we are still in the same scene. <laughs> um, and this is Cassie speaking. So we are teaching our boy how to order coffee at a hipster coffee bar. Okay, that's just like the scene that we're in here. Sorry, I mean, he'll have a galaxy sized, we are vivacious. And I'll have a moon size, we are empowered with extra foam. <laughs> um, so I'm assuming it's gonna be a cute little coffee mug. I'm hoping it's a coffee mug. Okay. And we've got ourselves, oh, it's in foam. We've got ourselves a little cauldron mug. Oh, cute. So we've got ourselves a 12 ounce cauldron mug. And if we look at the tag here, it's their order on a guest check. That is so cute. Okay. But yeah, it's just a basic cauldron mug, empty 12 ounces. I also really love this. Like, I just think like the sweet boxes at Once Upon a Book Club seem like the way to go. They just blow it out of the park, honestly. The next one on page 143 here is I opened the box. Inside is a set of 48 beautiful colored pencils ranging in colors from pale pink to a blue so dark it was nearly black. And then on this package she has a letter. Uh, Dear Cassie, for your art, yours, Frederick. Let's start with this letter. It's real cute with page 143. And then can we focus properly on the wax seal? So these are very often in the book. They kind of write exchanging letters and it's really cute. Just an easy paper. Oh, regular computer paper. Dear Cassie, for your art, yours, Frederick. And then they've wrapped it so nicely with the paper and the string. I always save these papers thinking that I'm going to use them for like my scrapbooks or for my journal entries and stuff. And like they've just been sitting in a, <laughs> in a bag. Like am I really ever going to use these? I don't know. Some of them maybe. Like I always feel super inspired to do it for like these the Halloween ones. Because, honestly, like, I love Once Upon a Book Club's packaging so much. It's just so... I just... It is great. I love their packaging. So, I don't know if this is a real art supply uh, um, company. But this is the one that's used in the book. Okay. And then, let's see, does this slide up? Nope. And it opens the other way. It opens where it says colored pencils, not the name of the company. Let me just fix those. But here is all the colors that we get from our colored pencil set of 24. And I don't have the energy to swatch them, so I'm not going to. Now, before I move on to the very last um, item in this box, I will tell you that it is in the epilogue of a romance book, so it gives away the ending if you um, catch my drift. <laughs> so if you don't want to be spoiled by the ending of this book, go ahead and, you know, skip forward to this timeline. To this time. Yeah. So... The next item is on page 336, literally like the, the second to last page of the book. It says, the ring that lay nestled within the black velvet box had a blood red ruby in its center that was the size and general shape of a dime, but with the, but with interesting facets cut into a, cut into it that caught the sunlight when Frederick shaking hands jostled it a little. So here's a little packaging it again. So we've got ourselves a little ring box. I think it opens. Nope. It opens this way. It has fallen out. Let me try again. This way. That way. Yep. There we go. 
And in it we have this little cardboard paper thing that says Cassie's Ring, Once Upon a Book Club. And then here is the ring that we get. It is a nice dark ring with the red... Oh, I really like this ring. Now, will it fit on any of my fingers? I have really big fingers. Um, so, like, my ring finger is a size 9, which means, like, any of those, like, jewelry box things never fit me. So this will fit on my pinky here. Okay. Um, so it's probably, like, a size 7, maybe. I don't really know ring sizes, but... And it is not adjustable. But it is very pretty, very gothic. I super love this ring. Wish it were a little bit bigger, but you know, a pinky ring ain't that bad. I mean, we blinged up out here. <laughs> anyway, I really loved this box. I loved both boxes, honestly, out of the ballpark with both of these boxes. Like both books were good this year, which already like sets it sky high. So my favorite item from like the spooky box was the pillowcases because obviously those are so cute, I love them. And from this box, oh, it's a heart, like, it's gotta be the bat purse. Like when I read that it was a purse, I was so disappointed, um, cause I don't use purses, but this is the, the, the cutest thing ever. And I'm gonna use this year round to like, same with my little cauldron coffee cup. I have a cauldron cup right now, um, that's for this, for the Pocus Pocus, the Sanderson sisters, but like, this is really nice. And then it means that I don't have to go out and buy one because I always see them when I'm at the grocery store and I'm just like, but I kind of want a Halloween mug. <laughs> so yeah, no, I, su I super love these box. I highly recommend like, uh, Once Upon a Book Club specialty boxes. Like the subscription might not always be for everyone, but they knock it out of the park with the gifts that they use for like their their Halloween boxes or their holiday boxes or anything like that. And their stuff is always really good quality too. Um, so yeah, that is the Halloween boxes for Once Upon a Book Club this year, both spooky and sweet. Let me know if you've read either of these books. Let me know what your favorite um, your, your favorite item was from these because they they did a really good job this year um anyway i need to go to bed <laughs> so thanks for watching don't forget to you know comment like and subscribe uh anyway that's everything my name's jessica remember we are all in progress good night <laughs>